Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. I'm Robbie Robertson, along with Oklahoma State head basketball coach Eddie Sutton. This truly outstanding season came to an end for Oklahoma State this past Friday in East Rutherford, New Jersey, as Oklahoma State lost to the Temple Owls in overtime in the semifinals of the NCAA East Regional. But the Cowboys had advanced to the Sweet 16 of the Big Dance, and uh, Coach, even though it was a disappointing loss, it certainly wasn't a disappointing season. It was a disappointing loss, and uh, everybody uh, felt a lot of pain by uh, losing to Temple because it was a game that uh, could have gone our way. When you hear the expression, it's a game of inches, oh, it boy. truly was a game of inches in this situation because Corey Williams, I thought, had a game winner uh, at the end of regulation that tied the game, and his toe was barely on the three-point line. Had he hit that shot, we would have been playing the Tar Heels of North Carolina uh, to get ready for the Final Four. As it was, we went into overtime and uh, we exhausted so much energy, which happens many times when you play catch up, as we were doing all afternoon. And when you get uh, to a, that point, you physically, emotionally are drained. And it seemed like to me that uh, either the disappointment of not winning the game on that last second shot or the fatigue factor, plus the fact that Mark Macon, their great guard, really took over that game in overtime. And, all of a sudden, uh, we, were, we were out of the game and, and the season had ended. But I told our squad in the dressing room after it was over that uh, it hurts right now, but a month from now, you'll reflect back on what we were able to accomplish. And uh, believe me, you'll be so excited and so proud of your accomplishments. And that's the way that my mail, that's the way the phone has been ringing all this that. week. I think all of the fans that uh, support Oklahoma State uh, understand that these young men did something special and uh, a lot of things hadn't been done around here in basketball at Oklahoma State, and that's the reason why I keep saying that this group of young men I am so very proud of because they did maximize what their uh, talent level allowed, would allow them to do. The excitement of, uh, of going to the Big 8 tournament, then on to Maryland for the sub-regional, then on to East Rutherford, New Jersey. Uh, the young players on your team, it prob they haven't had a chance for that all to sink in. I mean, the miles that they've covered and the things that they've done at this point. Well, one of the things that uh, I also told the squad, we'll be losing, losing two outstanding seniors in Johnny Pittman and, and John Potter, but uh, now our players uh, that we have returning fully understand the excitement of having a quality basketball team and a quality basketball program and uh, what it's like to go to the NCAA. And I was pleased to see uh, some of them uh, make statements like, uh, hey, this is just the beginning, uh, we're going to come back next year, we're going to do better. Well, with that type of attitude, and if they will dedicate themselves in the off season with the nucleus we have returning, plus the number of players that we have recruited, we'll have a chance to, to be a very good basketball team again next year. All right, winning breeds winning, they say. We'll take a look at the final look, or take a look at the final game of Oklahoma State's basketball season. When we come back, you stay with us. The Eddie Sutton Show returns right after this. After two victories in the sub-regional uh, in the east at College Park, Maryland, Oklahoma State was home for just a couple of days. Then it was off to East Rutherford, New Jersey to take on the Temple Owls of head coach John Chaney. And uh, coach, you rallied to force it overtime, but just couldn't get over the hump there and ended up losing to Temple 72-63. Seems like we were playing catch up all uh, afternoon. There's, this is early in the ball game. This is a great pass by Sean, and he did that numerous times this year. And, not only a great pass, but a great catch. So oftentimes the passer receives a lot of credit, but the guy that uh, is able to hold on to a pass like that has to be a very good player, and Byron Houston is that for sure. Early on, you had a little 10-4 run at the beginning of the game. John Potter with a three. Well, they played a matchup zone and a very tough one, and we did uh, jump out here, and it looked like that uh, we were going to be in good shape as far as our offense was concerned. We got good shots. John Potter hit a lot of key baskets early and we got out on top in the first few minutes of the game but their defense tightened up uh, made it very difficult for us. They're a big ball club too. Very inside. big and great athletes and uh, they uh, were on a, on a roll right there at the end of the year. We'd look at film and uh, at times they did not take good shots uh, but in this game they did and late in the year uh, in the NCAA tournament they did and uh, they just uh, really had it going. They almost beat North Carolina for the right to go to Indianapolis. Right. So 
an excellent basketball team and an excellent coaching job by John Chaney. You can see every time Byron Houston touches the ball, uh, he's smothered. He draws a crowd. It's a good example of going inside the defense, kicking the ball back out, and hitting, being able to hit the perimeter shot. Good ball movement here. Corey Williams had an outstanding game. Oftentimes, uh, individuals aren't uh, given uh, credit, but in this particular game, he had 17 points to lead a ball club, and he was the one that hit the uh, shot that uh, put the game in overtime. Had three threes, I think, in the first half. I believe we had the most three-point uh, goals uh, in this game that we had all season long, nine. Williams with another one. It's a shot of Patsy. Why, At that Patsy? time, she looks real happy. You're going to get another look at her <laughs> right. late. She's not quite as, as pleased. None of us were. Right here at the end of the first half. We ran a little out-of-bounds play, and we broke Corey Williams free underneath, and there's the last shot of the uh, first 20 minute period. Down by six at halftime. Uh, concerned at that time? Well, I thought we were still okay if uh, we just uh, continued to play the good defense. And we did play uh, good solid defense, good uh, put back by Cornell Hatcher. But we just never uh, were able to get the ball in the basket. We missed shots like this right here. And there's a follow shot by Byron, but. Uh, Johnny was only one out of five, and uh, for the game we shot 41%, which is well below our 50% shooting average for the year. Great follow shot by Matthias Sahlstrom, and uh, again in defeat, I thought he played quite well. Coming down toward the end of the... Uh, here's a play the that uh, concerned me a little bit, and... Uh, we'll take uh, another look at this. A foul was called on Johnny, and uh, he fouled uh, Strickland. And you'll see right here the official will point to uh, number 30. And yet when they got to the other end, Hodge shot the free throws, and Strickland's a 34% free throw shooter. Hodge is a 76% free throw shooter. So they uh, pulled a switcheroo uh, from one end of the court to the other, and I called timeout because there is such a thing as a correctable error in, uh, in the rule book but the officials uh, would not see uh, fit to uh, change uh, their decision, so uh, that hurt us. And here's uh, the shot to end regulation time. Drills it. You can see a lot of us thought the game was over. See Sean thought it was down. Over. He thought it was over, and <laughs> they're right. all down there hugging uh, Corey, thinking that he had hit a game winner. I've been so fortunate through the years of to have players hit shots like that, that uh, one ball games for us. But you can see there, his right foot is on the line. That was a correct call. Great shot though by Corey Williams and forced overtime and Temple was just, uh, Mark Macon was able to score three pretty quick baskets. Sean gets a three there. There's another shot of Patsy and you can see Let, she's later not quite the as happy there. <laughs> right. There were a lot of uh, long faces. We had a great crowd up there. Uh, Dr. Campbell and uh, Governor Wallers was up there along with many of our other fans. So uh, we had a lot, of, uh, a lot of good cheerleading going on. What was, uh, what was it like in the locker room? Would you mind sharing some of that with us? What were the, uh, what were the players thinking? Uh, I mean, you, you mentioned that you, that you told them that it's been a good season and, and uh, they'll get over this, but um, what, what was going through their mind? Well, a lot of pain. Uh, we felt like uh, our basketball team was good enough had we gotten by this game that we very well could have beaten North Carolina and, and could have gotten to the Final Four. And we were hoping that we could uh, play Kansas in the uh, rubber game to see who really right. was the Big Eight champs right. this year. <laughs> because uh, we were pleased that Kansas won and, and I, I hope that our fans, anytime that our other institutions are playing, that we cheer for them. Uh, and because they, they do represent uh, our league and they makes us look better. And so we were pleased that Kansas won, and I hope they do well against North Carolina. But our team, uh, I allowed them to each uh, say a few words if they wanted to. Uh, I talked to them first, and then I let the seniors. And uh, there was a lot of affection, uh, a few tears. Uh, this was a very close-knit group, and uh, they were disappointed in uh, the fact that maybe they weren't able to attain all of their goals this year. but. Uh, uh, when, they, when they walked out of that dressing room, uh, I think all of them walked out with their heads high, knowing that uh, they had represented Oklahoma State uh, in a very class manner all season long. 
and uh, disappointed we couldn't uh, continue. But as I said earlier in the show, they'll reflect back on uh, all the wonderful memories and all the wonderful accomplishments that uh, they were able to, to uh, get this year. And uh, they'll know that, uh, hey, it was a very, very special season and one that uh, I'll long remember. Uh, can you reflect back, Coach, from, from when you took this ball club uh, and you go through uh, tw or 32 ball games? Can, can you see some things that developed over the year, uh, whether it be work habits or uh, uh, character, uh, resolve, any of those things that maybe you weren't sure about at the beginning of the year but saw come to fruition at the end of the year? I kind of feel like a father uh, uh, or like parents, and maybe they would relate to this, as they see their children grow and mature and, and uh, start to make the right decisions uh, where you have uh, pretty much tried to show them what is the proper way, what is the right way. And uh, I point with great pride, uh, not only on the basketball court uh, where these young men are able to do that, but off the floor as well. Uh, we receive so many compliments uh, for instance, the other day when we checked out of the Holiday Inn uh, motel there, uh, the team had already departed and, uh, and the manager of the hotel and uh, a lot of other people said it was the nicest group of young men and they have a lot of teams, football and basketball teams that come through there that they had ever hosted. Uh, and uh, that makes me proud and it should make uh, everybody that uh, supports Oklahoma State very proud because these guys epitomize what you look for in a student athlete. We hear so many negative things today about college athletics. When you have a group of young people like this, then you can very well see that uh, intercollegiate athletics, there's a lot of good things, a lot of positive things, and, and I'm very proud of this group of guys. All right, there, uh, there are just four teams left in the NCAA basketball tournament. We'll take a look at the matchups. Coach will talk about all four of those teams when we come back. The Eddie Sutton Show returns in just a moment. It has become one of the biggest sports spectacles of the year. The Final Four in his event every basketball fan should have an opportunity to experience. And those are the Final Four. Coach, what do you think? Well, I still like the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, although they do look more vulnerable after seeing uh, Seton Hall and Georgetown mm -hmm. play them. But they still have the most horses. And uh, if they were to play a series with Duke, North Carolina, Kansas, they would come out on top. But when you play one game, those other three teams are capable of uh, upsetting uh, the running Rebels. Duke playing pretty well right now. Duke is playing very well, and of course, Duke was embarrassed last year when they were beaten in the Final Four uh, by the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. So I'm sure Mike will have his team uh, well prepared. And, and the second game will be interesting in that uh, Roy Williams, who is one of the uh, bright young coaches that we have in the game and who was uh, an assistant for Dean Smith for 10 years in North Carolina, uh, I, you know, it, it doesn't happen too often mm -hmm. where the pupil plays the mentor <laughs> and uh, North Carolina, uh, I would have to give them the nod, although I'll be cheering for the Jayhawks in that particular game. Both teams play very much alike, uh, so it'll be an interesting matchup. Well, Kansas is uh, so impressive uh, in their victory over Indiana. Uh, Temple gives uh, North Carolina a handful. It's really at this stage of the game. It's really kind of tough to pick anybody, isn't it, to say that somebody uh, should be favored over somebody else? There are no upsets in the NCAA tournament. All of them are good. The 64 teams that get there are all good basketball teams. Uh, Kansas probably had the toughest go in the regional because they not only beat Indiana, they beat a good Arkansas team. Oh, absolutely. All right. Um, when we come back, we're going to recap the season for you. You stay with us. The Eddie Sutton Show continues in just a moment. Oklahoma State was picked to finish fourth in the Big 8 race at the beginning of the year. They ended up being co-champions. The Cowboys won 24 ball games, went to the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament. I don't think anybody can argue it's been a very good year.
Yeah, rubbing that, rubbing that head. Now, Coach, I know that players are resilient. They come back from things like that, and, and you talked about that. Do coaches, how quickly do you come back from something like this? You're as disappointed as the players. Well, not any faster than the players, let's put it that way, but I probably have had more experience <laughs> in that situation than uh, they have had. So, uh, uh, again, uh, it's been a lot of fun, Robbie, this year doing the show with you, and great, great piece there that well, you just put that. together. Uh, we're going to go to the convention. I say we, all the coaching staff here at Oklahoma State. Uh, it's a dead period, so you can't be recruiting, and all of the coaches will be there. They only get together once a year, and they always do it at the Final Four. That is also the time when the rules committee gets together, uh -huh. so they'll be d discussing, uh, do we move the line back on the three-point shot? Do we widen the lane? S some things like that. I think the game of basketball right now is pretty good. I hope they'll leave the rules alone for a while and let everybody get adjusted to them. Right now, uh, basketball at the Kaiser level is at an all-time high in popularity. It's a great game, and uh, uh, I, I hope that they'll consider that. Our basketball team will take off a couple of weeks uh, from work workouts. Uh, they're going to concentrate on their studies and get caught up. Our uh, professors have been very kind in, in understanding that uh, it has been tough the last couple of weeks, but they do have some makeup work to do. And uh, then in about two weeks, Leroy Yoster, our strength coach, will get after them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll get back in that weight room. They'll get back on the practice court, play some on their own, work on some of the things they need to improve on in order to be a better basketball player. I, I'm going to talk to them uh, this week before I go to Indy and tell them that uh, they got to stay hungry. Uh, that was one of the reasons we were able to do so well this year. So uh, uh, they will be back on the practice court soon. we got a basketball camp coming up th this summer. If anyone's interested in sending their son, or their grandson. Uh, I think they'll have a lot of fun. They'll have a chance to see some of our players. We're going to have a banquet later this month and there'll be more information on that coming out. So uh, uh, in closing, I'll turn it over to you. I just want to thank all the great fans for the support they've given to our coaching staff and our players this year. It's been a lot of fun. Well, you have uh, you certainly deserve uh, accolades, Coach. You and your ball club have turned in an outstanding performance. It's uh, uh, Believe me, it's been a pleasure for me to sit here next to you. Uh, someone that I've watched for uh, many years, so I appreciate uh, your effort and certainly a great year for your ball club. We're out of time uh, for this year. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank uh, certainly the sponsors for participating in our show, and we hope to see you again next year. For Eddie Sutton and Oklahoma State University, I'm Robbie Robertson. Goodbye, everybody.